Hey, it's Joel. This is the Cetus Mark II. This is Strong Hero 3D Filament. This is a tree. This is Angus Devison of uh, Maker's Muse. This is his tree. This was his lattice tree, and he challenged everyone to print it. I actually took one of his favorite printers, I used some quality filament, and I printed it out. And I think it looks pretty darn good. It didn't stop there. I also printed it slightly larger. This is the same model printed in Enviro Engineering carb loaded PET and this was printed on the Ultimaker 2 Plus with the Rube nozzle. Turned out pretty good. Could have tuned the retraction a bit but if you look at the tree it looks like a tree. I thought great. These are examples of prints that worked incredibly well and I was really happy with how they turned out. However this video isn't about prints that turn out well. This is about failure and failing and prints that don't turn out well. We're gonna talk about it right here on 3D Printing Nerd. <laughs> While the Maker's Muse Lattice tree wasn't the only tree in town, there was another tree. Chris Russell over Practical Printing printed it. It was called the Impossible Tree and it was by Lucky X182. It was a model off Thingiverse. Chris did a fantastic job. I think he did it on his Mark III and it's this little swirly twirly tree right up to a tip to a point at the top. What makes it impossible is the geometry of the tree. It's got some wicked overhangs and the goal is to print it without support. Uh, I tried to print it on this and I, I, I checked the box that said no support but it wouldn't print without support. That's how dastardly this tree was. And that's how, well, possibly buggy the tier time software is. But we'll get into that another time. I thought, let's do this. And let's, let's see if we can make it bigger and more awesome. So I loaded up my Simi CNC Artemis with Asta rainbowy filament. It's a good filament and I printed it. Here's what I did. I scaled it up 2x and then I lowered the model just a little bit. So only one layer of the bottom layer was touching the build plate and then it would build the rest of the model from there. And I chose vase mode or spiralize outer contours or whatever it is in Cura for this. And it started going and it looked like it was working and it wasn't, it wasn't fully sealing the top but that's okay. I thought it was going to work. And then, and then I left for the day. And then madness happened and epic failure struck and I came home to a giant messy pile oh, that looked like this. Dang it. Quite the failure. You can see. So here's my single layer bottom layer. It's beautiful in its failure. So here let's separate some of this and go over there. So right here, if you look, and it's, it's doing the spiralize. So as this tree model goes up, it's almost like there are these oblong sections that are offset just a little bit all the way to the top. So because the nozzle width is on, let's see, on the Artemis, it's 0.5. I think it is. It's not wide enough to do spiralize, which is why you get these gaps at the top. But I thought the wall, it's beautiful and it's structurally well good. And I thought maybe it would be able to hold the weight. And it was just, it's just, it kind of bent down a little bit, which meant things wouldn't stick. And we ended up with this. Yaman. Yeah, it's a good model. It's a good model, but it failed. It failed. Okay. I don't want to fail. I want this to work. So let's print it again. This time I chose three perimeters and I dropped the model all the way down until that giant flat layer didn't exist anymore and wouldn't print on the printer. It's, I, I thought that would save on some filament and I had magic goo on the bed. I knew that with the heat, it was gonna hold on to it and it was just going to spiral around. And I tried and I tried. It had three perimeters, it had a bunch of infill. It was cubic and then, and then, oh, tragedy strikes, sadness. It looked like it was going super, super really well right here three perimeters, it had infill, it looked like it was gonna have the strength and I mean, look at that, if, I, if I'm doing that right there, if that's stuck down, that's not going anywhere until it gets a little thin right there and it bounces. And you can tell there's little burned bits of filament right there. Made a boomerang. Ooh. So now we have two failures on our hands. Count them, one, two, two failures. Failure was not an option and this isn't how I wanted to end this. Dude. Oh, do not. There is no try. I wanted to print this impossible tree. 
So what I did is I changed the rules. I scaled Z 200%, but X and Y I left 100% scale. We were left with a taller, skinnier tree, which meant that the overhangs wouldn't be as great and we might possibly get ourselves a successful print. Let's try it. Again, with this print, I didn't want the bottom layer there, so I just dropped it below the build plate and I started printing. It had infill, it had a couple different perimeters, it had some bottom layers and some top layers, of course, but uh, the most important thing is I like tacos, and it was printing, it was going, this was working! I couldn't believe my eyes. The, the GoPro was going, the time lapse was catching it, and then I remember specifically hearing the printer finish. And when it finished, we were left with this. This is the impossible tree. Granted, this is the impossible tree, but I changed the rules a little bit because I scaled X and Y not the same as Z, and that's fine. Looking at the tree, the quality is good. You can tell with the rainbow filament, we have kind of a green down here and it goes to an orange and a peach. Almost looks creamsicle-esque. I can tell that there are uh, some layer inconsistencies in certain parts. And after viewing the time-lapse footage, it looked like as it was printing, the sheer weight of it just bent it down a little bit as it was printing, which meant that it was just weighing it down just a little bit, but not enough to make it fail. I mean, look at that. It's a little stringy. I don't know if you can see that in there. There's some strings in there. They go all the way to the top, which is fine. I did 215C on the nozzle just because I wanted it to get nice and hot. Uh, the Asta filament actually did a fantastic job. The texture, the color, it looks great. If you want to try that filament, uh, I highly recommend it. Here's the most satisfying part of this entire experience. Let me tell you about it. This model, just like that previous boomerang, uh, is only held onto the build plate a very, very small little area. It's only held on by a small area, which means that because I'm using magic goo, as the build plate cools down, the models self-release. And if the center of gravity is way over here, then when it self-releases, I was thinking it would do that. So I set up the GoPro and I hit record when the print was done and this is what it caught. <laughs> oh, that is fantastic. That reminds me, and I can't believe I'm like showing my age here, but if you remember America's Funniest Home Videos back when Bob Saget hosted it way, way long ago, one of the winning videos was this cat that sat atop a TV and at some point during the middle of the night, its legs would fall out from under it and it would fall off the TV. And this sort of reminded me of that. Here's this model sitting on the build plate and then, oh. so what did we learn through all of this? First, let's talk about failures and 3D printing. Don't let failures in 3D printing get you down. You may end up with spaghetti. You may end up with layers that never adhered to each other. You may end up with a giant blob around your nozzle that you have to fix with fire. You may end up with a model that breaks free of the build plate. You may end up with a build plate that dances around. You may end up with layer shifts. You may end up with a clogged extruder. You may end up not realizing you're going to run out of filament and then your Christmas bobble isn't as tall as it could be. So. Don't let failures get you down. This is supposed to be fun and something we can enjoy. And so as long as you learn something from an experience, I don't think you can really call it a failure, at least in 3D printing. If a 3D printer fails at something, learn why it failed. Why did the filament jam? Why did the first layer not stick? Why did the filament ball up around the nozzle? Why did it not adhere to the build plate? Why did the build plate move? Why did the power go out? <laughs> Why is your house on fire? These are things that you have to take into consideration. And if you apply that sort of thinking to any of your 3D printing failures, you're going to eventually end up with a success. And your success could very well be something that was once impossible. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. 
2018 was a lot of fun. Uh, we'll see what we can do in the new year. Blessings to all. I love you guys. As always. High five.